to Arduino tutorial number four, hosted by the real Tony Stark. In this tutorial, we will be covering your very first sketch called Blink and maybe some modified Blink. For this tutorial, you will need the Arduino software, also the Arduino Uno or other similar board. You will need a clover with less than three petals and more than five on the same clover. So moving on, let's go to our very first sketch. Okay, now when I say sketch, of course, I mean our very first block of code that we'll be using. Uh, we're going to just right away, um, let's make sure that your, uh, well, your Arduino is plugged into the USB port. When, you, when it is, you will see this wonderful green light that is on, which means it is connected. Okay, you may see an orange light on there as well, but the green is the important one. That means we have power. So, moving on to our very first code. Well, if you've watched my previous tutorials, which I highly encourage you to do, um, you will have already learned the basic structure of how this interface uh, works, as well as what all of these wonderful pins do on the Uno. So using that information, we're going to make our very first sketch work. So here we go. Uh, the first thing we want to do is go up to File, Examples, Basics, Blink. And we're going to make that full screen here. So the first thing you'll notice when you read through this is the block of comment. Um, most good programmers who will provide a sample um, piece of code will have some indication of what it does at the beginning um, put in these comment blocks here. So it says blink, turns on an LED for one second, then off for one second repeatedly. Okay, and this example of code is in the public domain, so anyone can use it. Great. Um, so this is the real important line here. This is what the code is designed to do, and this is what it will do as soon as we upload it. So let's go through and, well, actually, let's first, let's just upload it to our board. So make sure in your tools, in your serial port that is selected properly for this uh, USB cable, as well, the board is selected Arduino Uno, or whichever board you happen to be using at this moment. Um, I'm using Uno, so I select that. You'll also notice it says down here uh, in the bottom corner, Arduino Uno on COM3. So that is going to just clarify for us, yep, we've got the right one selected. So as soon as that's the case, we can now go up here to this Upload button and click it. And you'll see this progress bar. You'll see some compiling sketch down here, as well as some things may appear down here showing you the total size of this code. This will complete, and this will say Done Uploading. At that same moment, your code will now begin to run on your Arduino. Now if you look at my Uno, you will notice that that orange light is no longer stationary. It is now blinking. And it is a period of one second. Just as the code comments at the beginning described. <gasps> Magical. So, how does it do that? Well, let's look back at the code and figure out what exactly they did in here. So the first thing we see at the beginning says int LED equals 13 semicolon. What? Well, of course, this LED is describing this LED on the board. Um, why is it 13? Well, if you've watched my previous tutorial, you'd notice uh, that that also is the same number that the LED is connected to on this pin. So there's automatically a LED put on the board, so you don't have to have anything else in order for this to work. Okay? Um, and what's great is you could take an LED and actually pop it in properly into the 13 and the ground pins and um, this will now be the LED that is flashing okay simultaneously with the other one okay um, so that's all that's doing for us it is connected directly to pin 13 and um, we're going to continue to analyze this code to figure out how else that works well we've got the int what is int in this case that means integer and we are defining a variable called LED, so the name of our variable is uh, LED, and we are assigning it a value of 13. 
And this is so that we can we don't have to type in the number 13 all the way through the rest of our code. Instead, we can use a predefined name that makes more sense to us than just an arbitrary number. So we're going to call this LED in this case. That's fine. Um, and it's an integer, right? That means that it has to be a whole number. So there are other forms that we could use to de define this as well, but this is a good enough uh, way to start here. Then again, you'll see this void setup. Remember those two open and close regular brackets and an open squiggly bracket. Inside of here, this is the code that's going to run at the very beginning. It's going to run once. And what it says is pin mode. Now notice the capital on the M. Okay, this is important um, caps and lowercase combination to get this to work. Pin mode, open bracket, LED. So that's talking to pin 13, and it's defining it as an output. All right, so this is going to do something. In this case, it's going to output light. All right, if you were to have a speaker on there, that would also be an output. It would be outputting sound. If you had a motor on there, it would be outputting motoring movement. Okay, so all of those would be outputs. They're things that we want the Arduino to do to put out into the world. Okay, and then a close bracket and a semicolon. So the semicolon up here is very important because it's the end of a statement where we're telling the Arduino do this. So that's where you'll find these. At the end of most lines of code, um, you're going to see a semicolon. So make sure that goes in there. If you up tried to upload and something didn't work, well, here we can demonstrate that right now. Oh, no, there's no semicolon. Upload. <gasps> what is this? What is this blasphemy? Okay, well, expected semicolon before this squiggly bracket token. So it even kind of tells you what you're missing there. Uh, it'll say blink.ino in function. Okay, so in the void setup function, which is here, something is missing. Expected this before this. Same thing. So it's saying before this thing. Notice that it highlighted that. Okay, even though the problem's up here, that's because it doesn't it doesn't recognize new lines as new lines. That's just for us to read. So what we're looking at here is somewhere before here. There's got to be a semicolon. Oh, that's where it is, right there. Okay, now again, this is uh, taken many years of practice to recognize some of these things as quickly as I do, but it's just trial and error. It's where I've, I've just been typing my own code, and I forgot to put a semicolon, and it'll say something like this. Okay, problem solved. I try to upload it now. Compile and sketch. There's no errors here. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to send it to the Arduino, and it will continue running the code again. All right, and close squiggly bracket, again, is tied to this one, which means that everything in here is part of void setup. That's all we're running once. We don't need to redefine the pin every time we go through the code, so we're doing that up here. Down in void loop, this is the part that runs over and over again. Digital right, LED high, what does this mean? Well, look at, first of all, the comment tells us what it does. Turn on the LED, or turn the LED on, and then it says high is the voltage level. So in this case, uh, we are using a 5 volt Arduino, so apparently it's putting 5 volts through um, that LED. Now there's a resistor on there, so that's okay. And it, digital write. So again, notice the format of the way this is written. The first word is all lowercase, then the next one starts with a capital. Okay, you'll see that in all of these commands uh, that have two words to them. Um, so digital write is telling it, because it's a digital pin, and again, you can denote all of these on this side as digital, uh, so they can be either on or off unless they are, of course, those six wonderful PWM pins, which we will cover later in another tutorial. Um, but that's digital is where we want to write. Okay, so writing means sending a value to that pin. So in this case, we're talking about pin 13. Okay, and that, this is why it's LED. We can use that through the entire code. It knows what we're talking about. It's pin 13. So we've got pin 13, and now we're saying high. Now notice again, the color of high is the same as output. This is a specific defined value that Arduino will recognize. So high, in this case, is voltage on, all right, at maximum, whatever that is. Uh, so we can output that through pin 13. Since there's an LED connected to it, we will see that happen as in the form of light. Close bracket, and there's that semicolon again. So we've told it what to do. Right now, it's going to turn that thing high, which means turn the LED on. The next line says delay 1000. Okay, now delay is very useful um, for starting programmers. It allows you to pause the code 
for a dis defined amount of time. In this case, 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. Um, and here it tells us that wait for a second. Okay, so delay uh, is all lower cap or all lowercase. Uh, it's in orange. So it tells us it's a defined function that Arduino recognizes. And whatever we put inside these open and closed brackets, that value is what it's going to uh, wait before doing the next piece of code. All right, again, semicolon afterwards. And then the next line, digital write. Again, now even though we're telling the LED or the Arduino to do something with this pin, um, we're still using the digital write function. This time, however, it's low. Okay, opposite of high. Low means essentially zero volts. All right, we want to put zero volts through that now, which means turn it off. Okay. And then we delay another one second. Otherwise, if we didn't have this in here, okay, let's just take it out. Actually, I'm not going to delete it. I could delete it. Instead, I'm going to put in a comment marker, which means this whole line is now comment. And I'm going to upload it. So if I upload it and we watch the change on my, uh, so it was flashing every second before, now you'll see it appears to stay on. Why is that? That's because in our code, what I just told it to do was turn on, wait a second, then turn off, and then it will go back to the beginning and turn on. But this is happening in a fraction of a millisecond that it's turning off. So that's why it appears to stay on. Okay, so it's important that we, that's why they've included the second delay in here, to say make sure you stay off also for a second. So when I upload that again, now that I've removed the comment markers, uh, we will see that begin to flash back and forth. Okay, so what I encourage you to do is to change these numbers. This is the beauty of this code, is once you kind of see what's going on here, just try changing some values and see what it does. So I'm going to say, let's make this 100, and let's leave that at 1,000. Let's just let's try that and see what happens. So I'm uploading my new code. And so now the period of time that it's on is much shorter than the period of time it's off. Okay, it's still a blink, uh, but that reflects the code that I just put in there. So what if I make them both 10? Uh, I don't know how well it's going to come through on the webcam. But uh, this is 10 milliseconds, okay? And it appears to be on, but if you get right in there, you can actually see it flickering ever so quickly, um, which kind of helps you define the lower limit of what the human eye can perceive in terms of a flashing LED. So looks about 10 milliseconds. You can kind of play with that yourself, but definitely play with this thing. Just try changing some stuff. Um, what happens if we change the name of our uh, variable? So let's call it um, monkey poop. Okay. Uh, and upload. Ooh, now what's this saying here? LED was not declared in this scope. Okay. In two spots here, it's saying in void setup and in void lo loop, it LED was not declared in the scope. So the first one it's highlighting here for me is this line. Oh, I'm still using the variable name LED. Well, that was never defined at the beginning of our code. And notice that the definition of these variables come before void setup. Okay, They have to happen before this even runs its initial code. That's where we need to define our variables if we want them to be, to be used throughout the entire block of code. So. Let's go through and change our other one, monkey poop. Now this is not a great variable name for two reasons. One, because it's gross, and two, uh, because it has nothing to do with what we're actually referring to on our Arduino or in our circuit. Um, so if I change all the values of where this was and I try and uh, let, let's just verify it, see if my new code is properly written. Um, so it's, okay, so it's done compiling. It says that's fine now. Okay, but again, this variable name does not have anything to do. And yeah, it's funny, but it doesn't really help us if we want to come back and figure out what was this code supposed to do. Now the comments help, but it's important to define your variables in such a way that are going to be useful for you to recognize later on. Also, in, if you ever decide to, hey, I want a blinking piece of code, you don't want to have to rewrite all of this, perhaps. So now you can just copy the block that you need and the variable will hopefully still apply to whatever you uh, intended it for it to do. So maybe a more appropriate um, variable name for this would be uh, LED pin. Okay. 
because um, we're not specifically talking about an LED. In this case, we're talking about LED pin. Um, and then we can change all that. Now, if you don't want to go write them all in here, you can press Control F, which is find. You can also go up here to edit find. Uh, and then we'll just type in, we want to find monkey poop. I want to replace it with LED pin. Now notice the way I wrote LED pin, same way that they write their uh, functions here. I'm doing with a lowercase for the first word and an uppercase first letter of the second word. Uh, and let's replace and find. There we go. Okay, so now we've got that changed throughout our entire code. And the reason why, oh, now look, it did it twice here. The reason why um, we try to use uh, variables instead of just the number is so that let's say that I'm, I'm hooking up an actual LED to my Arduino instead of using the one that's on board. And let's say I want to change it from a 13 to, I don't know, 12. Okay, just want to move one pin over because of whatever reason. Um, so if I change it in my code now, that's now effectively changed throughout the entire entire code. Right, if I change it at the very beginning where I defined it, we don't have to go in and find every spot where we addressed number 12 and change that, or number 13 and change it to a 12. So this is a very important aspect of variables. This helps save us time later on. It helps us identify what we're talking about all the way through the code. Um, and it's, we'll go over the types of variables in the next tutorial. So that's it for today. Uh, go through, change these values, uh, add in some other types. See if you can, if you know how to hook up LEDs to this, which I'll cover later on. Um, you can add a few more in and try and blink them in sequence here. Uh, we'll be covering a lot more coming up. Thanks again for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below. That's it for today. This is the real Tony Stark signing off.